Oh yeah, clearly oh. Bill. So now here I've got a hook. Straight shank, an offset. Why are there different types of hooks? They're now they're just, they're just pattern hooks. Straight shank, offset. Then, here's a circle hook, which is no offset. And it's the slight offset, okay? Now, why would you use a straight chain hook? Why would you use an offset hook? Yep, all. Yeah, plastics all. Trolling. Right, so that's Lee Demons, 7766s. Um, Tarpon hooks, all straight shanks, good for when you're sitting in current, waving away. Offset. Anybody know why you use an offset? Live baiting. Live baiting. See that? You go and get yourself a fish, a yellow tail or a slime or something, and you put it in his body. You want that hook point to be proud. Okay? Yeah. Put it in yeah. Go better? Yeah. That shank is parallel to the fish's body in the current. Where's that hook point? It's facing up. Okay? Why is that? Predatory fish take their bait fish head on. Normally they take it, unless you're trolling or spinning. Okay, they'll come from behind or up from the nose. But when you're live bait fishing, they swallow head first because they have dorsal spines that stand up. Like that, and when they swallow it, they lay down and they go head first and they don't stick them in like a pin cushion. So when you use an offset hook for juice, and I can walk around with this, you can see that with that fish along the, the body, the shanks along the body, where's the point of the hook? It's facing upwards. The point of the hook is nice and proud. You come to circle hooks. Right, that's called a, a mustard wide gap um, or big mouth. Gamma cats, we call them a shiner. Everybody's got their favourites. I'm just an old mustard man from way back. Why are they there? It looks like it's bent. Do you know why they circle hooks are like that? Because they're a commercial pattern hook. When you're a commercial longliner, you are not sit there ready to strike the hook. When you're using a J hook, you feel the bite, you let him take some line, you hit him, you strike the hook. When you're a longliner, you're not there. Right. The idea of a circle hook is to be swallowed by the fish. As it turns and runs away, it turns around in his mouth. 98% of fish caught in circle hooks are caught in the hinge of their jaw. So the fish has got to take the bait which you offer, which was generally a pilly and a squid, and he turn. And what the idea is that turned in point rolls around in the fish's mouth, comes to the hinge of the jaw and buries in. And as you can see, it turned around into my thumb. Okay? So, it's not in my thumb. As the fish swim away, it'll turn around and bury in. Right? Now, the recurve keeps the fish on the line because you're not there to fight it until you come along, pick up your float and bring it up. Why am I talking about commercial hooks? Because you guys are here. Because they've modified them for recreation anglers. Small hooks like this for live baiting are now readily available. When you're fishing with circle hooks, let the fish run with it. So, if you're out there fishing with a live bait, hook it through his nose. Now the best rig I can say with these um, circle hooks is just through the eye or just through the nose to keep him alive. And he'll swim around like that when the fish turns, it'll take him, but it'll turn around and get stuck in the fish's mouth. But don't strike it. Okay? Don't strike it. When you strike it, you're pulling it out of his mouth and it's going to come that way. Right? Let him turn when your rod loads up or your hand line loads up. Just set it then. When the drag starts peeling off. Okay? Now a lot of people, I know, say, I'm using these circle hooks. I'm missing the fish, and I say, what are you doing? Oh, I set the hook and they pull out. They're not designed to be struck at. So if you do use the circle hooks, irrespective of how fine a gauge they are, wait till you feel the weight, let the fish take off, and just give one short 
sharp wrap when you pick it up and it's, it's mm. generally hooked right in the corner of the hinge. 98% of the time. Okay. Other hooks, they're coated red, coated green, pink, whatever. Because sometimes it says red's the first colour of the spectrum to break down under water. But don't as Gabe says, some of the people that fish for whiting fish with a rig like this, with the bleeding the red, it's not going to break down under water in five foot of water in the surf. Okay, and as he rightly says, it'll catch you a lot of little fish. But if there's a nipper or a worm out there on the beach, you only need that because the big whiting will push the little fellas out of the way to get your nipper or your worm. So don't worry about with the red tube unless you want to be annoyed by a lot of little fish. Okay, I have found it sometimes to be an attractant when you've done a Pat Noster rig off the beach. So that's a snapper sinker and then two branches and you cast it out and you slowly retrieve it all the way. That red of, might flush around a bit but you've got two rigs out there, you're drawing, dragging along the beach bottom and a big fish will come along. But normally in the rough conditions. Now, now what bait? Everybody would probably use the humble prawn. And these are good old Windy Banks Hawksby prawn, probably the best prawn you'll ever get. Hawksby prawn, beautiful to eat, beautiful to uh, use as a bait too. Now, I'll, I'll go out on a limb here, I'd say everybody would get a prawn with their hook, thread it to it like so, and hook like that. Who does that? Yeah. And poop does that? Yeah. Hey, What's wrong with it? We notoriously take the head and take the tongue. Okay? But what's really wrong with it is he comes in and does it, guess what? There's a hook point. Not where it should be. Not where it should be. Okay? So guess what? Right up there. What's that doing? Floating around. Yeah, but how's it floating around? Spinning. It's floating with the current. What do prawns do? They swim with the current. They don't swim backwards. Who's no, seen the prawns swim backwards? No. Nope. They flip backwards. I was going to say. But they won't hold. What's the third problem? If you're drifting, it's a turbo prawn. Prawns don't spin backwards. They sort of understand what I'm starting to say. Now you're going to go all this trouble buying your bait, choosing a hook. What are you going to do? It? I'm going to show you the Johnson Windy Banks swimming prawn. Now, Len, we'll try this. You take, take this Aberdeen hook, and we'll just make sure that he's the right hook for this, and he is. Prawns come in different lengths, so do Aberdeen hooks. So, so what I would do is, this Aberdeen has got no offset, all right? So it's going to sit proud and do. Under the gap between the carapace, which is the prawn's head, and move along the backbone and bring it out between the second and third shell sector. Yep. Now it's a bit hard when you're trying to do it in reverse, but you roll it through and it comes out that gap between second and third shell sector. And you roll it through, don't push it through because you break it. And you feed it back through and stitch him up onto the line. Then your fingers are slippery. No, 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 just finish. You all get there, just finish. Fish, patience is pretty important in fishing. <laughs> right, then you work it out, back in, the hole you come out, and then you bring the point of the hook out between the fourth and the fifth section of shell, like so. Now, see what I've done there? There's a lens. Get me fat things out the way. You can just see the hook here. Yeah, contrast. <laughs> Just feed it in and pull it along until the hook is buried back in the flesh of the prawn. Take that thumb out. Then it. straighten it and with your line, pull those lines tight. Don't bust the prawn and he'll come through nice and straight and straight like so. 
just take a half hitch, which is a loop, fold it over itself and half hitch it around the head of the prawn. And I missed it. Yeah. Right. And there you have a swimming prawn. Now, if you want to work the shutter flat, you can cast him out and flick him back like a fleeing prawn. And in two inches of water, people are tossing the expensive $25 um, lucky craft lures and all that for lighting and that for poppers. That's that's a seven cent popper. But you flip it across the surface. But when you drift, he's going forward. Yeah. Okay? Same for yabbies. So no yabbies. You'll kill a yabby doing that. <laughs> so there we is a nice exposed hook on. It's something that's very similar like a, a lure, isn't it? Yeah, well about 30 odd years ago I was looking at a um, a DLA shrimp lure. And it's a fellow by the name of Neil Shot. Used to be the uh, founding editor and publisher of Saltwater Fishing Australia. Laurie and, and Julie and I both for Gil. And Gil was an advocate of DLA shrimp. And I said, I've got one better. And he said, Where'd you work that out? And I said, Well, me and Dad worked about fishing books for River Brim Comps. Okay. Now, once again, that hook point was nice and exposed. And you now have. The Johnson Mini Banks swimming prawn rig. So I'll pass that around for you to have a closer look. One thing you do, you're going to may have bait that spins, so it doesn't matter, you can use an offset. Whenever you use the tail bit, go one side of the backbone and pull your hook right through, around your line, and then go around the other side of the pilchard. And then come back in, Lynn, here we go. Through there, and roll him through. And that way, your soft pilchard bait is now there with a half hitch around the tail. Hold him in the current and a third of the way from the head. Same diff, you've got a half pilchards, okay? But you've got a lot more gut cavity and a lot more oil going into the water from the open amount of flesh. That's self-burling bait. Snap a love it, okay? All this, same burl. If you want to do it, you just put it through. I just go just in front of the eye with the head section, put it through, round, twist it so you're sewing it on, and just roll it round so it's on the other side of the backbone. Pull it tight, once again, hook point nice and exposed. Because that's an 11 cent hook, your $70,000 boat, your $6,500 sounder, and your $1,500 rod and reel, ain't worth squat if you seven or eleven or thirty cent hook ain't doing the job. I mean, you want to make sure that that hook point is exposed enough to do the job that it's designed to. Butterfly? Butterfly is just when you split the thing in the middle. Right? Now, the idea of a butterfly is if, I heard someone say, you run out of live bait. Now, I've run out of live bait on the dew grounds many a time when I've been using live baits for dews. Each time you do that, the fillet flaps. It looks like a wounded fish and the dews will come up and smack it. Right? So that's why you butterfly. Or in really strong current, it'll sit there and spin. But if you're going to do it in strong current, use an offset, uh, a straight chain hook and come up through the middle of his throat and out through the top of his nose. Because that way he'll sit in the current and he won't spin and twist your line up, he'll waft like that. Okay? Always point up. So that's how you butterfly. And that's the reason behind butterfly. It comes in different colours. You can get pink, you can get clear, you can get a goldy tinge. But the main thing about fluorocarbon leaders is that it, in water it becomes very hard to see for the fish. Okay? So, um, half inch around your prawn, half inch around your, um, your pilly fillet for a snapper.